deep to the epidermis is the next uh, layer of skin or the integument that we're going to talk about, and that is the dermis. And the dermis serves a lot of really critical um, functions, many of which are supportive roles for the epidermis, but some also include things like the fact that because there are so many collagen and elastin fibers present in the dermis, it is extremely strong and highly flexible. And that's important for our skin. We want to be able to have, for example, the skin on the outside of our elbows be able to flex and stretch as we bend our elbow so that we don't just end up tearing the skin every time we want to pick something up with our arm. The um, major characteristics of the dermis include also that it's primarily made of dense irregular connective tissue, which is all of this that you see down here in this slide. And there are many different types of cells and molecules that are found in the dermis, things like lots of collagen fibers, uh, some elastin fibers, which you will remember have the ability to stretch and, and retract. Um, there are some reticular fibers, which is a common type of, another common type of structural protein that's found in connective tissue. And we also have some different types of cells, such as immature connective tissue cells called fibroblasts, we also have macrophages, and these are a type of white blood cell who serve uh, the purpose of cleaning up uh, cellular debris and things like bacterial cells that might be present in the area. You will remember from our previous discussions in histology that connective tissue like uh, uh, dense, regular, and dense irregular connective tissue is highly vascularized and that's important because we said previously that the epidermis has absolutely no blood vessel present. And so all of the blood vessels that actually nourish the epidermis up here are located deep to the epidermis in the underlying connective tissue. We also have lots of different types of sensory receptor cells that are located in the dermis. We'll learn about those when we get to talking about the nervous system later on in the term. Um, another thing is that relates to the high vascularity of the uh, dermis is that it's really important in, in controlling body temperature because all the vasodilation and vasoconstriction that occurs, occurs in this layer where all the blood vessels are located. Okay, now um, some other purposes of the dermis that I didn't, well actually I did mention all of these already, we got them all. We talked about that it supplies blood to the, epi, uh, the epithelium, that it's chock full of sensory receptor cells and that it has a lot of collagen, elastin, and reticular fibers present to help give it some strength and support. So we can move on then and we can talk instead about the two different layers of, of um, uh, uh, tissue that make up the dermis. And these include something called the papillary layer and then a layer deep to that called the reticular layer. Let's take, tackle the papillary la layer first. So here's my basement membrane, right, going along here. And immediately deep to that basement membrane, there's a region of tissue here, runs roughly along here. And this is called the papillary layer and it is made up of areolar connective tissue. And you'll remember from histology that areolar connective tissue is a very open, loose connective tissue proper. There's lots of space, in other words, in that areolar connective tissue where we can have macrophages moving around, where blood vessels can move through the matrix. And that's all critical because it's situated so close to the epidermis and it needs to both support the epidermis in terms of nourishment and oxygen and also survey the area to make sure no bacteria are getting through the epidermis to the underlying dermis. Now, you will notice um, in this picture that I drew, and I'll, I'll circle it in black, in this area here and here and here and here, there are little finger-like projections of the papillary layer that reach up kind of into the dermis, that helps us to get blood vessels even closer to the cells of the dermis. And these are called the dermal papillae. Papillae means fingers, that's plural for fingers. So these are um, fingers of the dermis, literally. And not only are they there to help us get nourishment uh, and blood vessels as close to the uh, overlying epidermis as possible, they also are responsible for creating our fingerprints. 
So when you look on your fingers and you see all those little swirls and things on your fingers, that is the dermal papillae. Now, uh, uh, deep to the papillary layer is this second layer called the reticular layer. And it is composed entirely or exclusively of dense, irregular connective tissue. And you'll remember from our discussions in histology that dense, irregular connective tissue, because all the collagen fibers are situated in multiple planes, we can pull on that reticular layer in any direction we want to. And as a result, we will not get tearing occur. It's, it's nice, strong tissue for being stretched and manipulated in multiple directions without tearing. So what other kinds of things do we find in the dermis? Well, there are lots of, of other um, what we call skin derivatives, things like hair follicles, which are actually derived from the epidermis. And I know it's a little hard to see in this picture, but here's a stratum basale layer. And I'm following it down here. The stratum basale actually drops down into the dermis. And at the root of it, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it actually begins to manufacture and pack together very tightly together keratinocytes that form the actual hair shaft. We'll get to that in a little bit. Other things that we find in the dermis are sweat glands, of course blood vessels I mentioned before, lots of neurons for sensory perception of the external environment, and I've already mentioned erector pili muscles, those smooth muscles that are attached to each hair cell. And I have a nice slide here that shows an example of an erector pili muscle. Here I'm going to highlight in yellow is a hair uh, shaft all the way down to its bulb and root. And immediately next to it, right here, I'm drawing a circle around it, is a little region of smooth muscle tissue. That's the erector pili muscle. When it contracts, it pulls that hair in, into more of an upright configuration. Now the next part of our lecture, we're going to actually tackle in a, a little bit more detail some of these different skin derivatives I mentioned, things like the sweat glands uh, and the uh, nails and hair.